SVM Regressor. Wow, the support vector machine is now in here. If you're not using GitHub Copilot for your data science projects yet, then you are really missing out. So I've been playing with this tool for the past two months or so, and all I can say is that I'm really impressed by it. And working with it is just so much fun. In this video, I'm going to show you how I use it, the benefits, and also how you can get started with it as well. So let's get into it. I basically like to think about it as code auto-completion, but really on steroids. I've loaded a data set over here from one of my previous videos, Amazon headphone reviews, I want to get the average rating for each brand. So what then I would do next is I would say, I'm going to get this data frame and then I'm going to do a group by and boom. See what it's doing over here? So it's suggesting, okay, you want, probably want to group by brand because it's for each brand. You want to take the mean and then you want to show just the rating and it's already suggesting to make a plot out of it. So let's see what we have over here. Wow. So this is working. It's not too great, but that is just because there are too many brands in here. So we can easily say that we only want the head of this and then boom, we have the first five or let's say we want the first 10. So instant plot. So now let's say we want to do this for every product. So, okay, let's see if it understands what we're trying to do now. So I'm going to say DF again and then now it says group by product. And then it remembers you probably want the first 10 as well. So boom, here we have it. So product is not in there. And that is because it should be product name. And now we have it for the products already sorted again, a nice plot. And okay, now when we can create a function. So it is now suggesting split product rating object. Is this working? I'm not sure. It looks like something that could work and it's working. So five star, four star, one star, three star, two star. So what was it? It was like five seconds. I just basically explained what I wanted to do and then boom, function and then boom here's how you apply it as well so this is so nice it's just like as you are typing as you are coding it's like suggesting hey here's probably what you want to do and then boom you insert it all right so i hope that by now i have convinced you that this is awesome and you want this in your workflow as well so let me actually give you some tips how you can get the most out of this and how to actually make it more awesome using another extension so basically what you have to do to get started is go to github copilot and you can find the link in this document which i will link in the description description there are no affiliate links or whatsoever in this this is all just linking to the official website over here but here you can basically start a free trial with your ai pair programmer and there is a very nice 60 day free trial you so you can really try it out so i did it as well for 60 days and then i decided to hop on the subscription of 10 dollars a month because i need this in my life but here you can also see some more information about github copilot but you basically want to sign up using your github account and then start a trial so that is the first thing that you have to do and then you have to check if your ide is supported so one of those over here and then the next thing you have to do is you have to come up to your extensions and then basically Basically search for copilot over here and then make sure to install this extension so github copilot and then once that is installed you can come to the bottom over here you have this little icon and you can basically configure it and you can enable or disable it globally so once you've done that so github account trial vs code extension and then you're good to go so basically as you start to type it's going to suggest all kinds of things so that is how you get going but now some additional tips to make it even better and first of all we have some shortcuts so we can toggle through options with options and then using the brackets and we can also generate more results with control and enter so let me first show you the toggle option so i have a basic plot over here and let's say we want to add a title in here so it's suggesting already average rating for each product but if i hover on this i can see this is one of two options so i can now press option and then the right bracket and then i can basically toggle so it is adding rating in there as well and now for example if we say let's turn this into a function we comment over here then type def and it will provide us with some results and we have three over here so we can basically say okay we can toggle through it with option and the brackets and then we can basically see what the kind of nuances are and pick the best one so we toggle through it and then i decide okay this is the one that we want right now boom we got the title we got 
the label, we got the legend. All right, so we have everything. So we literally turned this code into a function in a matter of like two seconds or so. All right, so that was the toggle option with option plus the bracket. So let's now look at how we can use control enter to generate results. So I'm inside another project over here where we have a data frame with bike rentals and let's just ask it to create a machine learning model for this. So let's first gather the columns and I will ask it to create a train test split and a random forest model to predict Y from X. And now we hit control enter. So now it's going to synthesize the results for us. So here it will basically provide us with all kinds of things that we can import. So this is really exciting. So now we can just say, accept solution and then of course we have to import random forest regressor so it knows that and boom we have our model so here we have our predictions so easy machine learning easy random forest in a matter of seconds now there's one additional thing that i want to show you and this will basically supercharge everything that i've just shown you and that is github copilot labs and I wasn't aware of this. I only found out about this recently, but this is a VS Code extension for experimental features of GitHub Copilot. So they have some exciting stuff coming in the future. They also recently announced GitHub Copilot X, which is what Microsoft believes to be the future of programming. So if you have a look at what they are planning to do with this, this will be so awesome. Coding will be so much fun, but you can already test somewhat of the functionality that they are plotting, that they are talking about with GitHub Copilot X with this GitHub Copilot Labs extension. So all you have to do is come to VS Code, come to the extensions and then Copilot Labs, just search for this and it will be this one over here. So it's from GitHub as well. So this is another free extension that you can just install and it will just sync basically to your GitHub account. So also if you have the trial going on, it's not a separate subscription, it's just an addition. So here we have another script and let me show you what you can do right now. So now once you have GitHub Copilot Labs, this little buddy will appear over here. And look, we now have an explain, a language translation, we have some brushes and we have test generation. And now explain is really cool because it can basically explain what you're doing so you can literally say like hey what is it doing over here and then you say explain code but this is not much different from how you would do it for example with using chat gpt so this could be really nice but where it gets really powerful is the brushes so here you have some buttons that you can hit and you can basically make code more readable at types fix bugs so Let's see how cool this is. So for example, we can start off with, for example, this fir the first few lines over here. We can say, make it readable. Boom, it's loading and voila. So it's adding comments and also, oh, I see that it's first defining the features in a list and then the target as well. And then here it's specifying the X and the Y. So before it was basically split up. And now you can really easily see like, okay, here's the X, here's the Y. So it just makes your code more readable with just one click of a button. So now next, add data types. So here we have a function, say add types. Okay, wait for it, loading, boom. Specifying, okay, X has to be a pandas data frame. We need a series and this will output the scores to a dictionary. All right, pretty neat, right? You don't have to do it yourself. If there are any bugs in here, you can also fix it. So let's, for example, say you have a you're missing a T over here. So now this has a bug. So it's not working. It's pretty obvious, but let's see if it can fix it. Boom, fixed it. And so now next, what we can also do is we can make it more robust. So this will put in some exceptions, some error handling. So let's see what it can come up with. Boom, it will try accept everything. And then basically, if it's not able to run, it will print an error, error with linear regression. How cool is that? This takes so much time if you really want to make neat code and add this all by yourself. So here we have another function. Let's see what it can do over here. So types over here, make it more robust. We have some error handling in here. And now we can also say, okay, we want to document this. And we have a very nice description of what is going on over here. So you can basically see how you can just start to code like you normally would. And then every once in a while you come over here, you just make everything more 
nice and clean, readable. You add the types. If there are any bugs, you hit the debugging mode. All right, now the final thing that I want to show you, because this is also really cool, this is the custom option. So let's say, for example, I select this function over here that's already optimized, and I do custom, and let's have a look at the model. So if you linear regression, random forest, gradient boosting, and XG boost. Let's say we want add an SVM regressor. It's in there, support vector machine. So now we have added the support vector machine by just selecting it and asking it to add it in. And we'll just follow the same syntax, the same style, and it will just work. So to me, like this is the future of coding. Like you have your AI assistant over here. It is you that has to do like the creative thinking, the creative work, but actually like typing out everything and figuring out what what is SVM is called in the sklearn library and what you have to import that is all done by AI so you can actually focus on all the fun stuff this like really blows my mind but this really github copilot combined with github copilot labs is such an amazing combination and believe me once you get used to working like this you can't really go back because it just makes your life as a data scientist so much better and it's so exciting at least for me that we are still at the beginning of all of these tools and ai and it's going to make our life so much better so if you haven't already i would really suggest checking out github copilot x watch this video it's really exciting what microsoft and OpenAI have planned for the future this will be so cool and we can build so many cool stuff with this so again this document will be in the description you can find all the links over here that you need to get started i would really suggest hopping on the free 60 day trial because really this is the future of coding and if you want to stay relevant in a year from now five years from now ten years from now you really have to learn how to work with these tools because otherwise other people will just blow you out of the water and be 10 times even 100 times more productive than people that are not using these tools and now if you want to make your workflow even faster then check out this video next where i will share my top 17 vs code tips for data science